Yeah, it's looking good. OK, so we'll get started. Hello and welcome to our What's New webinar series. Um, as mentioned in previous sessions, this is designed to summarise and take you through the changes that have been made to Colleague as part of our latest release. Um, so this release is the 240602 build that went out as part of last weekend. Um, this will likely be a shorter session than previous ones, in all honesty, due to the contents of the release. Um, there were a couple of dev items which rolled over into uh, July uh, will be part of the August release um, for this one. But um, ultimately, there were still obviously development pieces that were undertaken and delivered. Uh, if you have any queries, please do um, far away within the Q&A uh, area of the session um, and we'll uh, obviously ask questions. Um, if you could keep the queries relevant to the session, i.e. based on the features that have been shown, that would be ideal. Um, and obviously, if there's anything out, outside of that, obviously the support team are there to assist um, with those kind of queries. Um, this session is being recorded uh, and subscribers to the What's New series will be sent a copy of the session um, afterwards. Um, so let's get started. So if I close down, close down there and then we'll jump straight to it. Um, so to start with, um, again, just to address the, the obvious, um, after a release has taken place, um, you'll be sent a notification to advise that you've been upgraded. Um, and you'll have a link to uh, a release notes. Um, this this is also available um, from within the help file. So within the, the question mark icon, which you can press at any point in the system, uh, that will take you through to uh, the help file. Um, and at the top of the help file, you always have the, the current release and when it was released um, and ultimately the release notes and a, a brief summary video about that release is available there as well. Um, so you can click on the release. Uh, and obviously see the, the details that we'll go through um, as part of this session. And effectively, as always, we'll be going top down um, in the uh, in the release, just going through the, the, the items that were covered. Um, so the first point to cover is the uh, email, the save as draft option that was added um, to the system. So effectively, when on uh, any record uh, or whenever essentially generating an email um, in the system, uh, it's now possible to uh, save that as a draft. Uh, this is only in the scenario of a single email address being in the two field. If multiple emails are there, then, uh, then this option isn't available. But if you are sending an email to a single person um, and uh, for, as an example, I'll put example in here, um, I'll type use a merge code as well. So you're, you're typing an email to someone and then something's happening, which has meant that you, you now need to focus on something else. So, you know, you can't finish this email, including you know, attachments and what have you, but you, you ultimately need to, to pause sending this email. And so what you can do is you can hit save as draft. Um, that runs the save as draft um, process uh, and effectively within Outlook, um, the uh, email is saved as a draft email um, into your drafts. Uh, so effectively you have it there um, as a draft email um, which you can then work with from there onwards so you, you the the documentation is added the um, the merge fields that you were using is added as well um, ultimately it's just all um, created for you to then work with within outlook um, as you would normally do um, so that's the uh, same as draft um, process ultimately you've got that option um, at all times <coughs> So that's save as draft, um, and I say you can you can run that from any work any workflow um, in the system uh, where you're generating an email. Um, the next one along is uh, to do with placement non-starter workflow. So um, effectively within Colleague, whenever there was a situation of um, a placement being made and the candidate for whatever reason just doesn't show uh, on the day one of the placement. Previously in Colleague, when that's happened, um, there's been the early finish functionality which we've advocated it be run and that will you know finish off the placement market is finished um and you basically just put the the end the end date as the start date ultimately but it wasn't really a clear way of um advising what happened there with that you, you obviously had to make notes against the placement to advise sort of what what uh, the reason for that finish was um whereas now we've done it properly in the sense of there being a non-starter workflow um so if i go to a uh, a placement 
Um, so let's say we've made this placement. Um, we're waiting for the, the start date to occur. We're all going to check in, obviously, with the client and make sure the candidate is shown. We check in and the candidate hasn't shown up. Um, if it's the case, then the candidate advice they're not going to proceed. Um, we've gone to the role. Obviously, that can happen. Um, then against the placement record off the view more menu, you've now got this option here called mark as non-starter. And it's it's as simple as that, really. You're clicking mark as non-starter and you're advising the reason um, uh, did not show. Found um, another job or, or, or something of that nature, whatever, whatever was the, the reason there. Uh, you hit OK there and that is now uh, marking the placement as a non-starter. Um, what that basically means is that from a from a history perspective, um, it's now been marked as a non-starter um, and you've got obviously a history to track that, that there and that history is marked against the placement, but also against the, the candidate record as well. So again, you've got that that history tracking of of, of the candidate. Um, and yeah, effectively from a from a, a placement perspective in terms of its its access, it's kind of then um, in a in a category of its own in that you've got um, a new section here for for non starters. Um, so you've got placements, obviously extensions, amendments, early finishes, and now you've got a non starter section um, to the placement as well. Um, so yeah, if you do need to uh, bring up any non starters that occurred, obviously that you can you can do that. And obviously that'll bring up the the, the placements that have not started uh, in the system. So that's the workflow that we would advocate. Uh, and our reporting now um, uh, is updated to, you know, take into account uh, when a placement is a non-starter, it will filter it out of that kind of placement overview um, as well. Um, so that's the workflow that we would advocate in the scenario of a, a non-starter uh, at colleague. Uh, at colleague, at, at, uh, you know, on, on colleague in terms of um, logging it. Uh, the let me just check if there's any questions. OK, no, nope, you go. Um, as far as the uh, next one along is concerned, that's the checklist functionality has been updated with an extra setting to check if a document um, needs to be attached. Um, so again, if we jump back to, to Tony's record and we go to the uh, checklist tab, Obviously, for those um, that use checklists, uh, will know that it's possible to obviously configure a onboarding process against a candidate and there to be particular rules um, against those checklist items, uh, which can stipulate whether or not you know certain workflow can be run later on in the process with this candidate if certain checklist items haven't been marked as completed. Um, what we've got now effectively is a process where um, you could now I'll go to admin. Um, and go into checklists against the, uh, you know, you've obviously got different checklist um, entities or entities you can choose checklists against, but I'll, I'll select, select this one, but there's this option here now that we've added called requires document. Uh, and what that basically will mean is that if you try to complete a checklist item without a document being added uh, against that checklist item, it will essentially give you an alert to say that that, that can't proceed. There's obviously all these other um, workflow based settings around checklists as well. It's worth mentioning that um, in that you can put rules against obviously if the checklist item hasn't been completed, you then can't kind of run this workflow or you can set alerts when you're running that workflow to make them aware that this checklist item hasn't been delivered. Um, so all that's uh, is based around kind of compliance. Um, but if I demonstrate this, if I was to try and I guess this is obviously the references activity. So if I was to go into here um, and, um, you know, obviously if we go into this checklist item, you can see there's no document uh, attached there. So if I was to try and mark that as complete. Um, let's refresh that, try again. So if I was to try and mark that as complete, there we go. We've got a checklist warning here, which is saying that um, effectively um, fail to mark as complete, documents required uh, as part of the checklist item. And if I open up there, try and do it this way. Yeah, sorry, there seems to be a problem there. I'll, 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 I'll feed that back to the dev team. Um, but yeah, effectively, um, what, that, what, what it should do is then effectively prevent you from being able to complete off a checklist item. Um, so that's the that's the that's the crux of it without a document being um, allocated to that checklist item, um, and that's the purpose behind it. Next one along is uh, to do with the API. Um, so I mean, effectively, the API obviously is there uh, for third parties, for integrations, um, for uh, any kind of um, portals or developer items um, to be set. 
uh, and, and create um, obviously integrations with Colleague. Um, and we've obviously been continually updating our API with features and functions that allow third parties to be able to do anything. Uh, the big thing that we did over the course of this last month was the addition of being able to create a company, create a contact, update an existing company or contact or uh, or, um, or get access to existing company contact details and, and sort of pull them back uh, as part of uh, an API call. Um, that's been done to enable um, a couple of different integrations that hopefully we've got coming up. Um, but effectively, yeah, that's that, that, that was, that was the, the, the crux of it. I mean, for, to a user's, from a user's perspective, they, they won't see any change. Uh, but from a third party that's trying to integrate a colleague for that purpose, uh, obviously those features are there now um, to enable that ability. Um, the next one along is to do with the portal. Uh, so obviously we have a, a candidate and contact portal, and that's to enable uh, candidates to uh, log in and, um, and and update their record or to attach documents. Um, obviously these portals are branded as well. Um, but if I jump over to the portal login, uh, and just log into this uh, portal record. So this is an example uh, candidate portal. Again, these portals are branded um, as you need them to be, but effectively what we've done is, is essentially recreate the uh, the same um, styling that's obviously now been put in place uh, in colleagues. So as part of the UI update that we made, where we updated the UI um, with regards to the navigation, with regards to the um, the, the, the tab structures and the, and the culture, we've basically applied that same branding now um, to the candidate and contact portal. And that's essentially the crux of the update. That's the, that's the candidate uh, side of it. Um, and if I want to update that or, or log into the uh, contact side, um, the contact portal is here as well. There we go. So the next item along is to do with um, panels that have been updated. So additional panels to the uh, user overview and to the team overview. Um, so if I jump over to the home page, um, jump back here. First of all, the uh, meetings arranged panel uh, was one of the first um, that was done here. So um, that's effectively um, if you've got a scenario where you're arranging meetings uh, with candidates and clients, obviously there's ones where you're tracking the calls being made or, or, or other sort of workflows that you're doing with the candidate, but meetings is, is a common one that we didn't have a, a panel for. Uh, so on the user overview now, it's possible to add the meetings arranged option there. You click on that. And obviously that will give you some detail about uh, meetings that are arranged and obviously links through to the associated contact records um, about that that relevant meeting. Um, so that's the meeting arranged one. Um, in terms of the um, summary view uh, on the company and contact record as well, um, if I just jump over to the. Uh, I'll jump over to a company record. So when you're on a company record, um, if you want to see a summary of that company in terms of its info, uh, the option is there uh, to click on the summary tab. And that summary tab will give you kind of a dashboard view of information about that company uh, at the current time. Um, and then you can obviously have that basically looking over a period of uh, this week, this month, this year, last 12 months maybe, uh, or a specified date range. Um, so if I do it for say this week, uh, but the key thing that we added here was current contractors and new permanents. So um, if you wanted to see um, what current contractors you have going on um, against this uh, company record through the dashboard, uh, obviously you've got this panel now, um, you can click on details and it will show the obviously the current contracts. When we say current contracts, it's obviously any contracts where uh, the start date, um, obviously there, if there isn't an end date, that'll be considered current, but also um, if, it, if the start date, and if the today's date is in between the start date and end date, obviously it's considered consider that as a current contract. Um, likewise, permanents obviously will be any start dates that are happening um, uh, between the, the, the specified date range, so this week. Um, so that was added as well, and that's obviously to the company portal, but also the contact portal, uh, sorry, the, the company dashboard, but also the contact dashboard as well. Uh, next one along is the uh, expiring um, checklist panels as well on the team overview. So if I go back to the um, home page and go to the, the team overview uh, and I scroll down here, you can obviously see there's an there's expiring uh, company, expiring candidate checklist points, expiring placement checklist items. Um, and these are obviously, again, for checklist management. So if you are 
uh, if you're using uh, the checklist and you're specifying, say, expiry dates to things like, um, you know, work visas or passports, you know, on the basis of putting expiry dates um, in against checklist items, obviously that then allows other people to um, be wary of and mindful of um, uh, candidate uh, items that are due to expire. Uh, and then again, if you get those sort of items there, you can click on the details and it'll give you the the, the, the checklist item that is set to expire when it's set to expire and obviously the associated record you can click through into that record. Uh, same to be said for a company and the same to be said for placement as well. Um, so that previously was uh, only a user overview panel, but it's now been added uh, to the team overview as well um, for that option. Um, the other component we've added as well is finishes as well. Um, so finishes previously it was only done as a user overview uh, for the finishes of people that have done their placements, whereas now there's a generic finishes uh, panel on the team overview to give you just a, a list of the finishes that are happening um, over the coming date range based on obviously what you've entered. Um, that's obviously uh, with this one is this year. There's also finishes in the next four weeks as well as that, that one is, is is more common in terms of issues, just just seeing over the course of the next four weeks uh, what's happening. So that's been fixed at four weeks, whereas the other, the other finishes panel um, is about the specific um, range that's been put into the parameters. Um, so in this case, this is this year. But if I changed it to, say, this month and, 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 and ran that instead, um, you obviously get the finishes for this month instead. Obviously, I can draw it out to there. The next items along are related to bug fixes, which obviously aren't, aren't we have demo those. Ultimately, that's just to be aware that those items were worked through um, and we continue to work through uh, points being raised. Um, a larger uh, piece that was done in this sprint, which is worth mentioning, is to do with time zones. Um, so previously, a colleague has been essentially working with time zones in different scenarios uh, or, or time zones in different ways in different areas of the system whereas uh, what we did as part of the um, last uh, development sprint was essentially um, create a standardized process for handling time zones across the whole database um, so that's now completely done um, in a way so that effectively we won't have scenarios where uh, you know, it, it, you know, it, certain certain uh, events get run uh, by certain users in in different geographical regions uh, with different time zones, and then the time appears an hour off or something like that um, in in the database for for the, the, another user that's seeing it from a different time zone. That's all um kind of be uh, handled properly now um, across the whole system, um, whereas before we were sort of addressing it piecemeal in different areas. So um, that's been done there. Uh, but effectively, that's the that's the crux of the the, the, the build. Um, we've got uh, some exciting updates that are happening um, as part of the uh, July release, um, namely around um, suggested candidates. Uh, so being on a requirement and clicking a single button and it going away and performing uh, a search and finding relevant candidates that are appropriate for the requirement and giving you long list workflow uh, off the back of that to work with those search results. That's a, that's a big update that's coming um, as part of. Uh, the July build, uh, but there's other things as well that will be part of that release, which we'll we'll post about and give you updates on um, over the course of this month. But also then obviously there'll be a, a release as well. Um, our next release is scheduled for the um, 4th of August, um, and that will consist of obviously everything that we've done over the course of July. Um, so more updates to follow with regards to that. Um, I will just check quickly see if there's any questions. OK. Um, and yeah, effectively, I'll, 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 I'll leave it there. It doesn't look like there's any queries from, from anyone. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, until next time, speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.